What's going on? Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through a hack the box machine. The machine name is October. And October machine is a machine based on exploiting buffer overflow. And in ACLR enables machines. So it's not going to be an easy buffer overflow. We're going to bypass some protections. Okay. So let's do the box. So here we have the inmap scare results. Dash SV, dash A, and we have the IP. So basically, we have two open ports, 22 for SSH, 84 HTTP. And right off the bat, we know that we don't have any credentials. So we're going to right off the bat, explore what is on the web server. And uh, for the title, we have we can see that there is October CMS. And October CMS is very well known for having a couple of vulnerabilities. So we're going to explore that in the web browser. Okay, we can now, before doing that, sudo <coughs> Well done, okay I don't know why this is happening And don't ask me Okay, so we go down there Of course, the IP 10, 10, 10, 16. All right. October HTTP. Hmm. Now. So we have a basic page for October HTTP, October CMS. Now, if you Google through October CMS, you will find that there is an exploit for October HTTP before, but the exploit actually based on uh, the default credentials. Of, so October CMS exploit. This is CV details. No, we're looking for that. Upload protection bypass code execution. Let's see some documentation about this. So we go to docs. What we're looking for, we're looking for the admin page. Admin page. So this is the directory structure. Log default post. Hmm. Let's look for the admin page somewhere else. So we're seeing this admin page. Back end. So here's some guy asking for how to access the admin page. As you can see, we have a directory called slash back end. If we tap here back end, and we are redirected to the administration area. Now, the default username and password works in this scenario, so they are admin admin. Login. And this is the first security misconfiguration, leaving your blog with admin with default credentials. Now, what's next here? Uh, October CMS exploitation is very simple and basic. All we have to do is to upload a reverse shell. So you go to media, and we see here something. Maybe previous people who has done have done the machine has uploaded that. So we can delete this. Uh, delete. As you can see, it is labeled as PSP5. So we're gonna find out why. All right. So what we can do here, we can just construct a basic. Uh, 
PHP file. Okay, so we can do, go back now, open your terminal. October HTTP dot PHP five. Now why PHP five? Because there is a filter that looks for the extension of every uploaded file. Uh, and the one that worked is PHP 5. So if we try with PHP 5, PHP 7, PHP 3, and the other one works. All right. So what we do here, we would say, for example, uh, PHP uh, system, and then we spawn CMD, request for CMD. We can use this parameter when you want to execute commands on the system. Okay. Nope. Okay, that's right. Now we have this file here, so we upload that directly. Upload. Mm. Hmm. Okay, well, what do we do now? We would navigate to this file. So in order to do that, we have to find where, as you can see, we have a public URL. Let's click here. As you can see, we have accessed the uploaded file. Now, the next thing is we use the parameter to pass, pass commands to the system. So for example, IT, as you can see, the command has been executed. So we have also file upload vulnerability. Okay, there is no checks on the uploaded files. And anyone can upload whatever they want. Basically, the upload of files such, such as PHP, Python, should be restricted only to the administration panel or the people who manage the site. Okay, so since we have here um, the ability to pass command on the system, we just get back to our console and we run sudo rlwrap nc.lpp4545. So we have a listener running now. Now, all I have to do now is to pass some command here, like bash reversal, php reversal, whatever you would like to execute. Okay, so basically we would go to Google and find some bash reverse show. So you can use bash, you can use Perl, PHP. Let's me use this one. See if it works. Instead of ID, we execute the PHP command here. Our IP address is if config. Get back to browser, and here is the IP. The port is four five four six four five. That's it. I don't know why I keep saying four five four six. Okay, let's see. And apparently I received nothing. So I should try something else. CMTPHP. Okay. Hmm. Let me try netcat since we are using netcat as a listener. So maybe we need to use something like that. And the IP 1314.2.45. Let me make sure the IP is right. 14.2. 14, 14.2. 14, That's right. None. Still no luck. Let's see why this is not running. Shall we put this one? No, not related. 4545. Okay. So in this case, we can use an alternative, since it's not working from the browser, I can't execute comments from here. What we can do, we can grab the URL and use curl. Maybe it works right with curl. Um, split. 
view, left, right. So curl and paste in the IP. We have CMD equal. So we're gonna cancel the CMD from here. Keep it as the file. That's as data encode the URL. And then we type in the parameter we want to execute. CMD equal. Let's get back and take this. We close the double code, replace the values with our own. Ten, 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 fourteen, two. Show me. Oh, so it works from curl. Okay. So now ID dub dub data. Let's spawn a PTY. PTY Python dash C import. I can't write import. PTY. PTY spawn and here we type bin dash. Okay, ls id. So right now we are dub dub data. Okay, that's the first reversal. So what we have gone through here, we have uh, ex not exploited actually, found the administration panel, logged in with the default credentials, found a file upload vulnerability that allows for the random upload of PHP files, and we get the reversal. So basically, next comes the privilege escalation. So we can use many methods to conduct the privilege escalation. We can use Linux, uh, Linium, uh, what was the name? I couldn't remember the code, the name. I haven't used that in a while for Linux systems. Uh, for Windows, it was Winpeace. For this, you can use Linpeace, or you can use Linux Suggester. You can just convert this into a uh, uh, interpreter shell and run Expos Suggester, or you can just do that manually. You can just try to find out what are the files that had the set UID bit enabled. So find dash type file dash u per u equal S to the no hmm. Actually, I may, I forget something. So here we should specify the directory. Yes, permission denied. No. Okay. So if you go over the output here, we can see there is an interesting uh, one overflow, and it is suggesting that we should try buffer overflow on this binary. Okay. Okay, that's great. So. Before trying so, we should uh, find out more information about this file. So basically what we do here, <coughs> we can grab a copy of this file on our local machine and try on it. But first, let's try to execute this file, this binder, and see what we get. Overflow. Over. Oh, okay. Shall we... Specify the full path. So here, as you can see, it's saying input string. So we have to type the full path and then specify input string to execute this binary. So we can type something like um, A, B, C, D. 
And as you can see, the output is A, B, C, D, and the name of the file. So since this is suggesting that we would use buffer overflow, the first thing in buffer overflow vulnerabilities is we try to crash the binary or the application. When I crash the application, when <coughs> want to find out where is the crash happening at which address and then we override this address okay that's simple brief about buffer overflow so what we can do here we can again specify the full name of the file for binary and in passing the argument we can pass a full long string of characters to see how the application behaves so we can just Pass that into a parameter and then put the value here. Python, you can use Python for that. Dash C, print. For example, we can try C times 500 or 400, whatever number you would like to try. And this one will print, right? Will produce an output of 500 Cs and pass it as an argument to the binary. Let's see how it behaves with such a, an exhaustive existing argument or input. So here we receive segmentation fault. Segmentation fault means that the up binary is actually vulnerable to buffer overflow. Now we should start looking for where the crash is happening. All right, wanna find the instruction pointer address. Wanna find what, where, where in the application, okay, the crash is happening. So we can find the instruction pointer address, find the offset, and then overflow the uh, return address. But before doing that, we should first look for if there is any protection enabled on the system. For example, some protections uh, are called data execution prevention, and some of them, or, or we can find some of them um, enabled or featured with ACLR. So ACLR is one of the mechanisms to protect against buffer overflows, but it can be bypassed. And the way to find out if, the, if there is ACLR, we can just try cat, proc, sys, kernel, see that it's in the kernel, and check if there is a randomization. Randomize BA space. If we get a number, like not zero, it means that there is ACLR enabled. So you can see we have two, it means that there is ACLR enabled. And if SLR enabled, this means that we can't put shellcode in the instruction pointer address. We can't execute shellcode directly. Okay. And that's why we need first to bypass the ACLR. So what we can do here, we can also check with a tool called LDD. Okay, and to find the address or the base address of LIBC. So basically, since you have ACLR enabled, the primary mechanism of exploiting this app or this binary is by using the technique return to LIBC address. Returning to LIBC address means that we're gonna, instead of planting a shell code in the return address of the binary, we're gonna plant the return address, or plant the address of a system function Okay, the address of a system function from the LIBC. So to prove or to make sure that we actually have SLR enabled, one way to do that is to type LDD, use LDD and put the, pa the path the uh, binary in testing, local bin overflow, and we see the LIBC. So we, here we get an address for LIBC. If we execute that again, we get a different address. But the, most of, as you can see, they both start with 75. One more time, 75, but also different address. So there is some kind of um, similar range for the addresses of LIBC. One more time. Now 76, one more time, 76, one more time, 76. 75 so you can you can say safely that they, they, they are between 75 and 76 so 
All of this to say that we have ACLR and protection enabled on the binary. Well, we can't just generate a shell code and put it in the instruction pointer address. Okay, so first thing, let's grab a copy of the binary to our local machine and examine it with the UDP debugger, generate some kind of pattern, okay, find the offset, and then we're going to decide how we're going to approach the shell code, how to create the shell code. So, what we can do now, we can split this more, um, split the view. And up here, can okay, NC dash LVP, let's say 4546, and we're going to receive the File. So we're going to name it overflow. No, okay, I actually I made a mistake in the direction. That's going to work. Now, here I'm going to say NC and the IP of my machine. All the time looking for my IP. 4546, and here we will pass the file. The full path, let's see the full path. This is the full path. Okay, so we receive the file. Sec, specify the format to so be CLI, format equals CLI, dash dash, file equal over low. All right, so here we have it. So looking over the properties of the file, we can see that NX enabled right here. NX enabled, okay, when you see that on the binary, it means that we can't run shell code from the stack of the binary. Just like when ACLR is enabled, you can't just run shell code on the instruction pointer. Here we can't run shell code from the stack. So this is to prove that we have some protections on the file. Okay, that's fine. We can just Look at that later. Let's now generate a pattern, okay, to crash the application, and then we find the offset at which the or at which whose address is uh, the crash is happening. So I can clear, and we can launch now GDP. GDP. I have it. Okay, GDP dash Q and over look. So I have PDA loaded. We can just do that from the internet. We can go to GitHub and load PDA to integrate it with the GTP. I don't need to cover that, but I'm going to be helpful and show you how to do it. So basically, we there's a URL here. You can go directly and follow in the instructions. All I have to do is to install it. This, 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 and done. Okay, so now let's generate a pattern, okay, and see where on the stack, okay, the crash is happening. So we can just type pattern, create, um, let's say 600 or five, stick it to five. Okay, so this is the pattern. That has been created, we can just take it and run it against the app to see where the crash is happening. Run. What happened? Permission denied. Oh, don't say it. Quit. Uh, sudo chat node plus x overflow. All right. Start over, and now we pattern create. Take the pattern, run. Hmm. Let's examine. So here, as you can see, invalid address at 
as you can see, the address is ends with 4141. So this means that we have determined the where the crash is happening. If you look up here and look for EIP, let's look for the instruction pointer. Where is the instruction pointer? Okay, here it is. So the crash is happening at this address. Okay, and here is the where this is the piece of strings that causing the crash. So what we can do now, as all of you know, once we generate the pattern and we know where the crash is happening, we can pass this value to find the offset. So we can go down and from here we can say pattern offset. I want to find the offset and pass in the value that caused the crash. This is the value. We can pass both the hex or the string value. I'm going to pass the string value. Let's see. As you can see, AA8A found at offset 112. We can also use pattern offset at um, using, sorry, the hex value or the address. They should be the same. Indeed, they are the same. Now, what's your next step? The next step is to overwrite the instruction pointer or overwrite this address with your desired string. Since we already know that there is SELR protection enabled, NX enabled, we can't write shell code, but we just, we just want to know how, where is the address at which our new strings will be written. So what we can do, we can say run um, Python, we can use Python, since Python is integrated with PIDA, we can run Python strings inside GDP. Instead of going to MSF uh, pattern create, MSF pattern offset, you can do that all from one place. Let's see. And then we type print. Oh, I think I'm mistaken. No. Okay, print. Let's see. What should we print here? Let's say A times. What's the offset here? The crash is happening here. So I'm going to type put everything. With A's until you reach the, or until put like 112 A's, sorry, right, like that. And then when you reach 112 A's, I want you to write with my desired string, which is, let's say, for example, uh, C, 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 let's say four. Okay. That's it. And we end this with. And we need to put this here as well. We will move the single code. Now what happened here? I just started with 112A, okay? And everything after the 112A will come four Cs. They will be they will overwrite the instruction pointer. And we want to find out where is the over where the, what is the Four C's, okay, as you can see here, where are they being overwritten? Which address? Let's see here. Stop. As you can see, this is the address. 4343, 434343. Here where the C's have been written. Look here, right? Now, in a normal scenario, we would replace the C's with a shell code, but this is not possible. We have SELR, have NX enabled. You see, very simple. We just determined the um, where the crash is happening, right? And then we supplied the characters required for the crash to happen, 112 characters. Everything after these characters will come our own desired string in the instruction pointer. And if, it, if this was a shell code, it would have been executed the next instruction of in the instruction pointer here, this address. All right, now here comes the hard part. We want to find out how to create a reversal, how to turn this. Instead of C's, I want something to turn into reversal, to turn into um, shell code, my desired shell code. So the only way to do that is to use a method called return to LIPC. So 
as we can see, we have determined the base addresses of LIPC, and we see that every time they change. So what we can do here from the library, we can select a function and execute that function, find the address of that function, and execute it here. We're going to use the library. Okay, a function from that library, find the address of that function. In this case, it's going to be system exit bin bash. With that address, we're going to override this, and it's going to work. So, let's first find some address, okay? Uh, the first step is to find an address, the base address of LIPC, the library, and then we use that to find the addresses of the functions we are looking for. So, we get back to the machine here, and we type LDD, the path, And we grab LIPC. So the value we have here is this one. Now we can use this value to find the offsets of the functions we are looking for. So in order to find the offsets of these functions, system, exit, and bin sh, we have to see the properties of the library. This one. So we can use read, write ELF. We can use that to find the properties, dash S. And we supply the, the library file. Let's get up here, see. OK, this, this path. So we use this path, take it, yes, and paste. Right. Now the next step is we grab the offsets of the functions we're looking for. We're going to use these functions or the offsets to create their addresses. And one, once we grab their addresses, we can, we're going to use that in a for loop, okay, to execute them instead of these. So grab dash e, and here we define. Let's say the function. First function is system. System at something dash e also grab exit uh, let's leave and lastly we have to grab also the offset of penis edge we can leave that uh, at the end so hit enter so we can see for the exit function and system function that are required to complete the process there are the offset 60 and 10 okay now, how to calculate their addresses? We're going to multiply these values with this address to find their addresses. What we need here is to, we need the addresses of these functions at the library so we can use them here. Okay. These addresses can be found by multiplying the offset with this, with the base address of the library. Lastly, we can find the address of bin sh. So we can use strings dash a dash t x and we put the target target path which is a library of course grip uh, bin let's say sh so here it is great now what's going to happen now let me grab a text editor and show you how the process will be uh, proceeded with. So let me get back to my machine in another terminal. Okay, so sudo nano um, lip address. Hmm. So first, let's find the address of bin sh. How we can calculate this? Let's get back, show you how we do this. So we take Actually, it's addition, not multiplication. I have made a mistake. So we take the base address, this one. And we say plus. Now, minus h, this is the offset. Get back. And don't forget to add 0x. Now, next one is system. 
this time will be equal we're going to repeat the same equal to we have the base address of the library plus the offset of the system function which is here next exit equal of course we take this and we sum it to the opposite of exit now what is the resultant value equal oh equal Okay, to find the values, we're going to have to use a hex calculator. If you don't know how to do that manually, you can use a hex calculator. So we go to online hex calculator. Okay, get back. The first value, just omit the 0x and take this. This is the first one. The next one is this one. Calculate. And this is the resultant value. So here, 0x. And this is the address of Venus H, 0x. And here also we have x, not to miss that one. So we're going to keep B76. This is the base address. We use that all the time. I'm going to copy that only. Uh, actually here, just a second, let me get back, three zeros, all right, calculate, and this is the resultant value, this is the address of system, now next we have the opposite of exit. Oh, okay. And this is the address of exit. Great. No need anymore. Okay. Now comes the exploit. Let's save that and get back here. Now, normally, if there is no ACLR enabled, our approach would be different. So if there is no ACLR enabled, we would have just exploit that this way. You would type the full path, or let me grab the full path, which is right here. Execute the app. Hmm. Then, of course, as we did earlier, when we tested, when we first tested the binary, we passed the parameter value, the argument value as a uh, as a as you can see here and using python dash c print okay here it comes so what is the formula for that so first let's get back to the hex calculator i said we don't need it but actually we need it calculator so um a no. We type B. All right. Just wanted to make sure that the values of these aren't incorrect. Okay. So what is the formula for that? We have to do it this way. Let me get back to the editor. So the Python string would be something like Python dash C print. Okay, here we have A's for example, and as we remembered, we need only 112 A's so that after these characters, we will start in, uh, planting our own shell code or our own string. So plus, what do we need here? We need first the, uh, let's say system, address 
plus the exit address plus bin sh address. Okay, that's what we need. So once we do that, it's gonna work. Now the order, uh, I chose this order actually, system address, exit, and bin, actually it is not bin bash, it is bin sh. Anyway, it doesn't matter here, we're just, uh, doing some drafts to make sure that you understand or get the idea. So, let's get back now to the terminal here and craft our own command, our own string. So here, let's choose everything to be in hex. It's going to be in hex, of course. And um, let's choose like x9c. Where is the 9? Okay, here is the 9. Times 112 plus. Next, we need the address of what? Let's say first, we're going to grab the address of, um, I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, and the address will be in reverse order. Let's say, let's choose first the system. So we get back to here, and this is the address. And the address will be written in reverse, starting this way, 10. And then we have the 0, 3. Right, and then we have the 68, and lastly we have the B7. How it's gonna happen? So let's take this one first and put plus double quotes. So first we have X. What's the first character? 10. Backslash. Then we have 0, 3. You have to be very careful with these. And then we have 68. And lastly, we have B7. There we go. That's for the system. Next, we put plus and we pass to the exit function. So we let me grab this one here. Okay, the exit function starts with 60. backslash and we have 32 backslash 67 b7 and lastly the bin sh okay let's put double code actually forget the double quotes here mm -hmm. all right Backslash, no. Now the PSH starts from AC. Then to B, D2. Actually, it is uh, B2, right? No, put back. The actual string is B. I am confused. AC. And then we have 2B. X to B. And we have 7a, x7a, lastly we have b7. All right, now the string is finished. And we let's check on the double quotes, double quotes, close that. And we have the, the Python one, the print, which is single quote. And we have the parentheses, and we close that. That's what we do if there is no ACLR enabled. This one stands true. We can use this one. Copy that. Now, since we have ACLR enabled, our approach will be different. We need some kind of loop. We want to guess the correct address. We don't want to. We don't know actually what is the address, right? Since the LIBC library address here changes every time. Hence, we can't, this one will change all the time, okay? So this one, as you can see, LIBC changes every time, so we're gonna get into a for loop, or while loop, let's say. So we can type while true 
two. What we will do here, user uh, bin overflow. Next, pass in the parameter and the same comment. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what we meant. Just one more time and see that LVP. I hate this when spaces aren't copied, so they mess up your comments. Okay, one more time. While true do user and we actually let's take this. Take right from here all the way to this point. Right. And now we type done. We're going to get errors now, but eventually we're going to overwrite the address. Okay. Instead of C's, this time it's going to be with the functions we have found the address for. It's going to be bin sh. So, so far we haven't grabbed any. I don't think it should take this amount of time. Bin overflow not found. Oh, wait. Oh. Bin user, user bin overflow, how come? Oh, it's gonna be very hard now, finding the strings. No, I am doomed. Oh, this is, re this really sucks actually now. One mistake, oh my God. Okay, we just forgot to add the local here, and this is what happened. All right, all right. one, two, two, user, local, bin, overflow. And again, I think we have to, okay, let me type the command here. So, Oh. Size 112 plus now start writing the addresses from scratch. Zero Seven. And then we have the um, what was the order? The system, right? And then we use the exit function. I remember. Um, okay, let's use the exit one. So exit x sixty x32 x67 b7 and finally the bin sh which would or which will give us the new shell as system hopefully as a root sorry same actually and we have a C to B seven um, A B seven.
Okay, take this one. And here. Okay, now the rest is done. Let's try. Aborted core dump. Eventually, we should get revert shell. We should get some new shell here. Breakpoint. So it took some time to finish, and finally, as you can see, we have got root access, eGroups root, EUID root. Now the next thing is to find the um, flag. Let's so we want to go find the flag, see the root. Let's get root. Okay, and this is the flag. So that's how it worked. I hope this was clear about buffer overflow and how to bypass ACA LR detection using return to LIBC library. All right. Thanks for watching.